Carrie here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to share my experience and journey with hypothyroidism and pregnancy. Hypothyroidism is something that's fairly common in women and something that I've personally been diagnosed with since I was the age of 19 years old. So I've been on this journey for the past 26 years living with this disease. I want to share my experience with you in case anyone else out there is struggling with this or having similar symptoms and you don't know what's going on. I just want to share with you what's happened with me because quite a number of you have hypothyroidism or are dealing with a thyroid issue and are pregnant or trying to get pregnant or thinking about pregnancy. And so I hope this video not only helps you but gives you some things to think about. I don't want to scare you, but this is my journey. And I feel like I need to tell you about the struggles that I've had so that you can be prepared with what might happen and take the precautions you need if you do become pregnant with your hypothyroidism. My name is Carrie Pratt, and I make videos about being a mom, about cooking, gardening, and some of the adventures that we like to go on as a family. I have multiple health issues, which I haven't shared with on this platform other than the most recent video where I talk about my Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but I feel the need to share my hyperthyroidism and pregnancy story with you because it is so unique. My first diagnosis was at the age of 19. It was hypothyroidism and more specifically Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The story might be a bit long, but I'm going to share with you my first pregnancy journey, specifically what happened in my third trimester and the emergency C-section and premature birth of my son. If you didn't know, first of all, your thyroid gland is situated right about here. That affects pretty much every aspect of your body your hormones, the way you feel, the way you put on weight, the way your muscles work, it pretty much affects your entire body. And my first video explains that a little bit more in detail. Did you know that even mild or subclinical hypothyroidism leads to possible infertility and increased risk of miscarriage? Hypothyroidism in early pregnancy, even with limited or no symptoms, may increase the risk of preeclampsia and the risk of infant death around the time of birth. Women affected by hypothyroidism in 0.3 to 0.5% of all pregnancies. Subclinical hypothyroidism during pregnancy is associated with gestational diabetes, low birth weight, placental abruption, and the birth of a baby before 37 weeks of pregnancy. For both of my pregnancies, I was watched closely with regular checkups and blood work to monitor my thyroid levels. We were living in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta at the time of my first pregnancy, and my doctor was Dr. Andre Venzil. He was very concerned about my risk of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a complication of pregnancy. With preeclampsia, you might have high blood pressure, high levels of protein in your urine that indicate kidney damage, or other signs of organ damage. And they monitor for these symptoms with regular blood work. So my third trimester, I got in for a normal checkup. And Dr. Van Zyl found something that he didn't like. And so he sent me to Red Deer Hospital, which was 45 minutes away, to meet with another doctor and have them look at what was going on in my body at the time. The doctor there said I was tired and dehydrated and sent me back home. So we decided to drive back to Rocky Mountain House that day. And when I got back, told the doctor and he was extremely frustrated that that had been the result. So he immediately admitted me into the Rocky Hospital. Now this is a small town hospital with not much um, services there, but he felt that me being in the hospital was the best place for me to be to which Dr. Benzil decided I was going to spend the night in there. While we were there, some of our friends stopped by and my husband told me later that one of them remarked to him, does she know that she's not coming out of the hospital until the baby is born? Well, I know that I didn't know that at the time. 
I thought it was just to be observed for overnight to see what was going on. The very next day, my husband came to visit me at the hospital during his lunch break. And I was sitting on the edge of the bed with my feet dangling over the edge. My husband noticed that my thumb started to tremble. And then my hand and then my whole body commenced shaking. And I started to fall towards my husband and he caught me, but I was shaking and jolting my body so much that he describes it as being like a fish out of water. And with my frantic movements, my husband was able to lift me back onto my bed and also push the help button to summon the nurse. At this point, I became unconscious. When the nurse arrived, I'd slowed down, but there were still a few spaz-like aftershocks that my husband noted that were running through my system. In seconds, the nurse had called down the hall for help, and immediately there was a team that was surrounding my bed. My husband was tucked back into the corner of the room, and he was trying to give them as much room as possible to work on me. Trevor at the time had no idea what had happened, but the medical staff did know, and we learned that I had had a grand mal seizure. They were talking fast and giving and taking assignments, all responding to the doctor who was in charge, which ended up by luck to be Dr. Van Zyl, my attending physician. At that time, the doctor turned and asked me a few basic questions, which I was unable to respond to. Trevor said he could see the wheels in my mind turning, but no words came out. The only thing that I was able to recall was who I was. So Dr. Van Zyl told my husband that he had to stay right there in the room as he was the only thing that I recognized at the time. Soon afterwards, I was wheeled from the bedroom into the emergency bay to be loaded onto an ambulance. Trevor was following the bed as it made the way down the hall. And Dr. Van Zyl looked at Trevor and asked, Edmonton or Calgary? Trevor honestly had no idea what he was referring to. And so Dr. Van Zyl asked again, Edmonton or Calgary? And Trevor, still being stunned with what was going on, the doctor broke it down for him and said, you're going to have a baby today. So do you want to be born in Edmonton or in Calgary? Well, I at the time had family living in Edmonton and so Edmonton was the choice that Trevor made for me. As they were getting me hooked up to be transported, my blood pressure was extremely high. It was 280 over 160 and the doctor was giving me injections through my IV to try to bring it down. Trevor noticed that it wasn't working and he could see the stress on Dr. Van Zyl's face. As he gave me the injection, and then waited and took my blood pressure again, and it still was not dropping. The concerned look on the doctor's face told the story, and it wasn't good. Dr. Van Zyl then announced, we are taking her and I am going. He called the nurse at the counter to rearrange his appointments in the clinic for the afternoon, as he was gonna go with the patient to Edmonton myself. He then looked at my husband and said, we're going to the Royal Alex, don't drive yourself. I was loaded on the ambulance with the EMT and Dr. Van Zyl in the back and the doors closed and we drove away with the lights and sirens wailing. I have to admit that I don't remember any of this at all. This is, I have no recollection of this. And so I'm thankful for my husband and his journaling of this story because as I read this, it brings up a lot of emotion and how grateful I am that I had a doctor who was aware and prepared to make that decision and that he sacrificed so much for me that day to go with me. So my husband called his boss and his boss dropped everything that he was doing that day to drive Trevor to Edmonton. So what we discovered was that I had eclampsia and it's a severe complication of preeclampsia. It's rare but serious condition where high blood pressure results in seizures during pregnancy. And seizures are periods of disturbed brain activity that can cause episodes of staring, decreased alertness, and convulsions, violent shaking, and loss of consciousness. 
What I did know was that eclampsia affects about one in every 200 women with preeclampsia. You can develop eclampsia even if you don't have a history of seizures. And due to this grand mal seizure that I had in the hospital with eclampsia, it triggered epilepsy, which will be another story that I'm going to share with you in how I was diagnosed with partial complex seizures. And this is the point in my life that triggered this, which we didn't know at the time. So back to the story. My husband's employer agreed to drive Trevor to Edmonton and they had a good chat about everything except what was they were really facing. On arrival to the hospital, Trevor was able to sit in the room with me, who at the time was partially conscious. And the medical professionals, after medical professional, came into the room and explained to Trevor the role that they had on my team and what they would be doing in the upcoming emergency C-section that I was going to have. I was rolled away and my husband was left there alone. The boss who had drove Trevor in stayed until the new baby was born because he wanted to see what the gender was. After a few hours of waiting, Trevor was able to see a 2000 gram premature little boy in an incubator. I was still in recovery in the emergency room with no timetable of when I would be out of that room. Eventually I was placed in the ICU and given a whole team to take care of me. Trevor says that that first night was the hardest for him. I was not fully conscious and Trevor was asked to sleep in the room with me just in case something went wrong so that he could alert the nursing staff. But he also noted that every 20 minutes all night long, I was checked on to ensure that my vital signs were still there. Trevor admits that he did not sleep a wink that night because it was an emotional night for him. And it's almost unbearable to sit still in a hospital room and watch your loved ones be aided with your breathing, with monitors everywhere. And he prayed and hoped for the best. So I slowly began to improve over the next number of days. And it did take three days until I was well enough. Well, I don't, I wasn't well enough to be put in a wheelchair and taken over to see our son because I was adamant to see him. He was at the time in the neonatal ICU and my husband's role was to stay up on all the medications, the progress reports and the visitors as they came and went. And as a new mom, I felt very strongly the need to see my newborn baby, even though I wasn't well enough to go see them or have visitors myself. So I gained that internal strength or stubbornness in order to get in that wheelchair and be taken up to see my son. We were both in hospital for a couple of weeks until we were blessed to take home a little boy weighing four pounds, 10 ounces, and not much bigger than a pair of my husband's wool socks is how he described it. We will be forever grateful for Dr. Van Zyl who felt that I need to be admitted to the hospital, even when the Red Deer doctors didn't agree. And it wasn't by chance that I was in the hospital when I seized, or that my doctor was doing rounds that day. I trembled to think about what would have happened if I had been at home and Trevor had come home for lunch, and what would have happened to both myself and my son. I know people were bumped that day, as the doctor hopped in the ambulance and took me to the hospital, but I am forever grateful. For Dr. Van Zyl and the care and attention he put into me that day. I have been blessed with wonderful doctors and Dr. Van Zyl is just one of them that has helped me on this journey. So that's my kind of random story, but it also has so much to do with being me. So I wanted to share with you this information and my personal story, especially if you're someone who has hypothyroidism and is thinking about getting pregnant or is pregnant at the time, that you're watching out for those things and understand why the doctors 
are checking up on you and doing your blood work because they are doing what's best for you. I am so grateful for Dr. Van Zyl and his love and care and attention he put into me. Obviously, I'm not a doctor and I'm just sharing my personal experience and everyone's experience is different. We each go through this life with a different experience, but I hope that in sharing my personal story that it can help somebody else and that you listen to your body because only you know your body and your symptoms. But pay attention, especially if you're pregnant, that you are watching out for these symptoms and understand why the doctors need to do the work that they're doing. I wonder if the doctors in Red Deer had kept me overnight, if they would have paid more attention to what my signs were, if I hadn't had my grand mal seizure and become eclampsic because my eclampsia triggered my next thing which we didn't find out for a few years later, but that was partial complex seizures, which is going to have to be another video in itself. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced hypothyroidism or preeclampsia or eclampsia, or if you've been able to correct some of your thyroid issues with medicine or diet or lifestyle changes. I would love to hear about that all in the comments below. Let's create this community and support one another as we go through this journey of life together. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for being part of my community. You make this all worth it. And I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week.